Hi, I'm Yelm Siegel, this is The Beat, and this is The Beat Cantina. We're talking to Rizwan Manji. You've seen him on Shit's Creek, The Magicians, Perfect Harmony. We're gonna talk to him about all his favorite pop culture things. Hello. Hello, welcome. Thank you. What are you up to? I am uh, doing some TV, which I'm excited about. Yeah. Yeah. You've uh, been very busy this it's year. It's been very busy, and all of a sudden, everything stopped shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still airing. Right. But, um, yeah, at this current moment, I'm looking for a job. This is the place to be. <laughs> a bar in the middle know, of the day. That's it. It's all going down, you know, from now on. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in this industry for quite a long time. Long. I just started. You just started. Yeah. That's right. I'm in the youth department. <laughs> <laughs> so gonna... Right, right. You're, you're not someone that my parents are actually big fans of. <laughs> um, when did you start? I uh, realized very early on that I have no other skills. Oh. <laughs> I'm not able to, I was very good at basketball, <laughs> as you can tell. I'm sitting on a stool, but I'm very short. I was going to say, you're short, but I didn't want to be I am rude. very short. You can't tell. I'm very short. <laughs> so I would uh, audition for all the school plays, and I would never get cast. Uh, I would so, always say it's racism. So you're always saying <laughs> Not that because of my talent. You don't have other skills. You didn't get cast. I didn't get cast. Uh -huh. But they were doing stuff like Brighton Beach memoirs. Right. Right. And I was like, uh, what am I going to play in that? There's like, oh, this is Brown Kid in Brighton Beach memoirs. You're the beach. I know. I was like, the beach. Yeah, it's like very like uh, avant garde theater. Right. Uh, but then I did get cast. I got cast in a play in junior high. It was like a comedy and everybody laughed. I was like, oh, people are laughing. I think I can do this. <laughs> what was your first big break? I would say the first big break was probably this movie that you might not have heard of, uh, but it got a lot of play. It was called American Desi, which was about four Indian guys going to a university in New Jersey. It was one of the first movies that was like an in like sort of like South Asian movie, but with but in English, right? Like mm -hmm. it was like one of those like crossover films and the New York Times wrote about it and there was like a review and it was like the highest per screen average of the of the week that it opened up. So, and then of course 9-11 happened and we, all of a sudden, everything that was being offered was like, can you be a terrorist in this, in this thing? And so it kind of slowed down and then Outsource happened. It took a while, but then Outsource happened. And I think that was like the big, big break where you're like outside of the, Indian community, mm -hmm. people were like, oh, who's this guy? That was a beloved show. Yes, I miss it to this day. Uh, I loved it. I also loved the the cast and the crew and the right, like we're still friends to this day. We like hang out, me, Pervage, Ben, Anisha, we're like, we're still really good friends. Well, reboots are a big thing I know, right, now. right? They should, I don't know if they reboot shows that were only on for one season, but like, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that you, are spanning genres. Yes. You've got a comedy, you've got a Canadian comedy, which to me is a completely different genre, <laughs> and you've got a sci-fi sci fantasy show. Yes. So I'm on The Magicians. Right. Uh, season five, so I'm excited to be continuing to play Tick Pick Tick Pickwick. That's a very hard name to say when you're saying it <laughs> yourself. Did you not know that his name was Tick Pickwick? <laughs> I, I do know now. No, I, <laughs> I did know, but I don't usually get to say it, right? Because yeah. I don't announce my own name, but the people say it. You should. I should. I mean, now that I'm saying it, I was like, it's really yeah. difficult. These actors should get an Emmy. <laughs> I shall. Not. <laughs> uh, I love. Uh, playing him because you have no idea whether or not he's uh, <laughs> evil or good. <laughs> right, and this season we have a whole lot of like time jumps yes. and stuff. And so. changes because one of our main characters is no longer in the show. Right. Oh uh, my god, what yes. a heartbreak. Yes. I know there was a lot of controversy over the season finale of mm -hmm. season four. <laughs> I want to talk about the costume that you wear. How complicated is it's, that outfit? It's very complicated. Usually needs three people to put it on, including myself, who's like being like, no, and I'm usually wrong. I'm like, no, it's this way. There's a lot of, like, it's like a puzzle. You have to like interlock all the stuff. So at different points in, in Vancouver, like in the summer, it's very, very hot. As soon as they say cut, I was like, I take everything off, but it takes like 20 <laughs> minutes to put back on. So finally this last season, they just like 
trimmed some of the. They made it a very a, a light a lightweight version of, 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 <laughs> of my outfit, which I was very happy about. That's awesome. <laughs> um, you also, speaking of Canada, yes, are on Shit's Creek. I'm on Shit's Creek, which is in its final season. Yes, we've already shot the entire season. Uh, it's airing now. I know everybody keeps saying, like, wait, it's over? I just started watching it because people didn't really start watching it for until like, like two years ago. Right. And people are like, wow, you're on the show called Shit's Creek? I'm like, yeah, I was telling you about it six years ago. And you were like, what is that? And I don't get popped. So, uh, yeah. You don't see anything wrong with this? The man standing awfully close to that woman, wouldn't you say? Well, he's holding on to her so she doesn't fall into the creek. Look a little closer, Ray. Well, it does need a little sprucing up. Sprucing up? It's very popular. People come from all over to take a picture with it. I'll bet they do! On that show, it's very much feels like an ensemble yes. comedy. Do you have a lot of fun with everybody? It's great. Like, my first day um, on set was a scene with uh, Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara and me. That was it. I was just so, so nervous. I was like shaking. I was like, I don't know how. Because, <laughs> you know, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, that's your first scene that when you get the. Uh, and uh, they were so funny. And they were like, they were like a married couple on, on set. They were like arguing about what was funnier with the, in the scene. <laughs> and I just was like, and now I'm just like, hey, it's Eugene. We're just like having a conversation. <laughs> oh, I think I see it now. His shoulders are too big. Get in the car, Ray. I love Ray because Ray doesn't understand boundaries. Right. <laughs> I love that about him. I wish I could be that person where you're just like, hey. I sometimes feel like, you know, we're all like, I don't know if I can do that. Ray doesn't care. Right. Doesn't care. Do you have a favorite line of Ray's? Yeah. <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really appreciate how different Tick and Ray are. Oh. <laughs> and then also Reverend Jack. Yes. On Perfect Harmony. <laughs> Do you relate to one of these characters more than the other? Um, what's funny about both Ray and Reverend Jax is people will say that I'm like a pessimist. <laughs> like I'm always like, oh, the glass half empty, right? And I get cast in these roles where Ray and uh, Reverend Jax are just so, <laughs> they're just so happy to be alive. Right. They're just so optimistic about everything. Ray's a little bit more of an opportunist. Reverend Jax just loves love. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with Tick, He's almost a fake <laughs> a cheerleader, right? Yes. Like he's like a, he's sort of like there's ulterior motives. So it's fun to play that sinister side of uh, of Tick as well. One of the greatest things about Reverend Jack is <laughs> his movie titles. Uh, Do you have a favorite movie title? There was a very controversial one. Where I was like, how is this gonna work? I la it was part of my audition sides, but it was um, you can guess what the title. Don't get AIDS. <laughs> Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. <laughs> I was like, I was talking, Tom Hanks is my favorite actor, and right. I was like, they're gonna cut this. Sounds, but it actually it, it made it's it it was it, they kept it in. It was funny. It made sense with the character. And people were like, we don't understand it until they got to episode ten when my parents showed up. <laughs> Let's talk about that episode because your daughter played my, your sister. Yes, my daughter played my <laughs> sister, which was insane. She got to be on set for the whole week. Um, it was my birthday one of the days during that week, so she got to like wheel out a cake that they brought. Aww. It was like a lot of fun. It was like a, one of the one of the things I'll remember forever. So. Do you think she'll remember it forever? She's like, oh, oh, like that, and then she's like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh, no. Well, because she gets pampered, right? Like <laughs> yeah. at school, she's like doing homework, and then she's like, oh my god, I need some water, and something's like, wait. I'm like, you're going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you've done. You're I know. I'm a like, diva. I was like, you're gonna be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Today's interrogation of Rizwan Manji is brought to you by Squarespace, the easiest platform to make a website for yourself. Check it out at squarespace.com and use the promo code COMICSBEAT for 10% off your first website. I've got some questions. Okay. I'm scared. <laughs> Good. What do you geek out over? You're going to laugh, but I every Wednesday I play trivia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm not great at it, but we play as a team. So I have specific knowledge, mostly like pop culture knowledge. 
and we are going to be playing at the national championships. Oh. Sometimes there's actually been Shit's Creek questions on there. And, and I was like, I know that one. Oh, good. So, yeah, yeah, I, it I, would be I, real bad if you didn't. I know, right? Are you competitive? I'm very competitive. I'm competitive with my children who are like 10, 8, and 6 years, 11 now. But like, I, you know when you play and you're like, you let the kids win? I don't. Like, if we're playing cards, we're playing anything, I'll be like, haha, and then I'll be like, haha, I won. Like, I'm a, in my 40s. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm very competitive. What is the worst fad you've ever participated in? So remember when like, guys would like, dye their hair? Like, so I thought, oh, that's so cool. Like, I'm gonna be like, blonde or whatever. I think I put like, brown, like, strip. You like, didn't I frost like your tips? No, I, I don't even know what that means, but maybe I did. I don't know, it just did not look well. I also had an earring, because I still had a hole in my ear. Uh, at one point, I rollerbladed. Wow, you you participated in a lot of A lot of fads. fads. It's That's... all. I had a Blackberry, is that a fad? <laughs> yes, Blackberry. I had it until the end. I was the last person to have a Blackberry. <laughs> what is your weirdest pop culture crush? Weirdest pop culture crush? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Tongue twister. That's hard, weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh, should I say this? Yes. I was a big fan of <laughs> Millionaire Matchmaker. Do you remember that show, Patty Stanger? <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, Patty's great. I just was obsessed with that show. I don't know. My wife started watching it and I was like, oh, this... and then she stopped watching it and I continued watching it because I just thought it was the most. It was the greatest, is it, hour, hour of television. Yeah. I was fascinated by what these people were doing. And then I met Patty Stanger at like, I think a gifting suite. And I was with my wife and I'm like, oh, and she's like, you're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> I can't believe I just said this. I love it. I like that your wife is aware of your That's right. thing for Patty Stanger. Patty Stanger. Oh um, my God, I even know her full name. It's so sad. What is the biggest movie or TV show that you've actually never seen? That I've never, ever seen? Mm -hmm. One that everyone is ashamed of you for, not seeing. Well, I only saw E.T. recently, so that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever seen Gone with the Wind. Oh. Is you should bad? be ashamed. I haven't seen all the Star Wars movies. Get out. I haven't. Just leave. I should go, right? Yeah, you should go. I think I'm going to do that. And my son really wants to watch them. I think he might be a little young, but so I'm going to watch them for the first time with him. <laughs> Me and Patty Stanger will have like a movie. Night. You know, Patty Stanger and your and son. And my son will watch the <laughs> I'm um, an awful human, I've just realized. Uh, what celeb do you still fangirl over? What celeb do I still fangirl over? Um, I have to say that I, I'm. Don't say Patty Stanger. <laughs> no. Uh, Tom Hanks. Really, like I, I worked with him and he's just the nicest person and I'm just like, I, I'm honestly fascinated by how somebody can have that prolific a career and still be the nicest human ever, so yeah. Uh, is there a ship that you ship on a show? Oh, a relationship? Yeah. That's so funny, I didn't even know what that word was until recently because somebody wrote an article about how they were shipping Ginny and uh, um, Arthur on Perfect Harmony and I was like, what are they shipping? And then I had to read the article and I was like, oh, a relationship. Do you ship Ginny and Arthur? I, I don't know if that, well, I know what happens in the season finale, so oh. I can't say anything. <laughs> what is your most embarrassing fan encounter where you're the fan? I'm a fan of Jarell Jerome. Okay, and so I, we were at the Emmys and uh, we were at a red carpet event. I was like, oh, it's Joel Jerome, like, blah, 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 whatever. And then we're walking, but I'm like, not gonna be like, you know what I mean? Like, so we're just walking and he's walking behind me. And I didn't know that he was walking behind me. I had seen him, but I didn't know he was walking behind me. And then, you know, when you're walking into the thing, there's all the fans are there. Mm -hmm. on, and they're like, oh my God, you, you. And there was this woman who was looking directly in my eyes. She was like, you, can I take a picture with you? And I, like, it was like, definitely not me. Like, she, nobody knows who I am, okay? I was just like, literally nobody knows who I am. So I was like, like, you. But she did it 10 times, like, in my eyes. So I finally felt like I had to be like, are you talking about me? <laughs> and then she's like, no. And she pointed behind me, and it was Jarell Jerome. And I was like, not only was I coming, but I was like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed right now. And everybody, it was horrible.
then I couldn't be like, oh my God, I'm a big fan because I was just like, oh my God, I thought she was talking to me, but she was talking to you. <laughs> he actually, then he came over to me, he's like, sorry. Like it was awkward. Yeah. So yeah. And then you guys took a picture together? No, we didn't. I was so embarrassed. I basically should have gone home. Awesome. I think we have enough information. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me here Thank today. Thank you. It was so much fun. Thanks for joining us here at The Beat Cantina. I'm Yael Teagle. Be sure to like and subscribe because this is The Beat and we're just getting started.